Transcribed. Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the delightful Rogers and Hart musical success, I Married an Angel, starring Gordon MacRae and his lovely guest, Lucille Norman. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and the music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another memorable musical is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is our star, Gordon MacRae. Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In this delightful Rogers and Hart hit, Lucille Norman plays an angel, wings and all. My name is Count Willie Pilafi, the head of a Budapest banking firm, and, uh... Have you heard I married an angel? Well, if you haven't heard, it's quite a story. So let's go back to the beginning, because it's pretty amazing the way it all happened. Are you Now, quiet, quiet, everybody. He's coming up the stairs. Now, 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 remember, when Willie comes in the door, everybody yell, Happy Birthday! My dear brother will be so surprised. Now, turn out the lights. Quiet, everybody. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Peter? Where are all the lights in the place? Oh, hello, Willie. <laughs> Fuse blown out. Uh, I feel terrible. I'm, I'm going to bed. Uh... Don't you want me to call anybody for, uh, bridge? Bridge? I don't know anybody in this town but half-wits. A surprise! Happy birthday! Happy birthday. <laughs> surprise, Lily. Oh, yes. Surprise. What a surprise. Brother, dear, what's wrong? Oh, hello, Peggy. Could we sneak away out into the balcony and have a little brotherly, sisterly talk? Sure, birthday boy. Come on, out with it. Tell sister. Here it is, your birthday. It's springtime, and you're the unhappiest character I've ever seen. Anything wrong at the bank? Oh, that's funny. But that's not it. It's just me. Starlight doesn't mean anything. Springtime doesn't mean anything. Once there was a thing called spring When the world was writing verses like yours and mine All the lads and girls would sing when we sat at little tables and drank May wine. Now April, May, and June are sadly out of tune. Life has stuck the pin in the balloon. Spring is here. But why doesn't my heart go dancing? is here Why isn't the waltz entrancing No desire No ambition leads me Maybe it's because nobody needs me Spring is here why doesn't the breeze delight me? Stars appear. Why doesn't the night invite me? Maybe it's because nobody loves me. Oh, spring is here, my here. 
What you need, Willie, is a wife. You need to get married. Oh, sure. Name somebody. <laughs> Willie, you're not looking for a woman. You're looking for an angel. Yeah, you know, if one flew down from heaven, I'd marry her in a minute. Come back to your party. Come back to Earth, Willie. Uh, I'll join you in a minute, sis. Good. But don't you be too long. come from? Heaven. Huh? I'm an angel. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. What are those silly things hanging down your back? Wings. Wings? We angels all wear them. Now, look, look, this is a birthday party, not a masquerade. Whoever you are, please go away and tell my sister that practical jokes aren't very funny. I don't know your sister. I don't know anyone on earth. I saw you down here. And I looked in your heart, and I loved you, huh? after all. Spring is here. Why doesn't your heart go dancing? Spring is here. Why isn't the waltz entrancing? No desire, no ambition leads me. Because nobody needs me. Spring is here. Why doesn't the breeze delight you? Stars appear. Why doesn't the night invite you? Maybe it's because nobody. like an angel. <laughs> but she couldn't be. Why are you so unhappy about women? The earthly kind, I mean. Well, I'll tell you. Every woman is a cheat. That depends on whom you meet. Angels can be kind of sweet. So everything's comparative. You know I have fallen once or twice, and they always gave me ice, but they also look so nice, so it's the same old narrative we know. Starstruck. Did a glamorous skirt ever pilfer your shirt and tie? Did you ever get flung? Did you ever get flung? Ever knowing you are struck? Never knowing you're struck by a twenty-ton truck in a form of a female eye? Did you say she lives for me? This is it. Now at last, you bit, you were it, you got hit by the blast. Then you must have been stung. Then you must have been stung. Where the doctor can't help you. Where the doctor can't help. And you swear that you're good till another queen bee flies by. You know, I, I believe you are an angel. Even above the music of the heavenly choir, I heard you say you wanted to marry an angel. Well, here I am. Why don't you kiss me? Well, uh... uh, uh, uh. Mm. Mm. Now I know you're an angel. But, uh... What's wrong? <laughs> well, those, those wings. What do my friends say? Well, just tell them the truth, that I'm an angel. They have eyes, they can see. Oh, they have eyes, but they can't see, my darling. Come on, sneak down the back stairs with me and then let's get married. 
If you just hang on and hug me tight, we don't have to sneak any place. We can fly to our wedding. Oh, Angel, it was a wonderful wedding. But uh, what was that name you gave the minister? Brigitte. It's what my sister angels call me. But I'd like it better if you just called me Angel. All right. I shall always call you Angel. Willie, have you ever kissed a girl before me? Well, I'm, uh, I'm afraid I have. Oh, that's wonderful. Hmm? I should think it would make you mad. Mad? Oh, no. Because you told me the truth. And the truth is always beautiful. I have married a beautiful man who tells the truth like an angel. Well, uh, on earth, my angel, you must occasionally tell a neat little lie. Oh, no, never. What is the world like? Tell me, Willie. Oh, the world, my angel, is a wonderful place. Now that you are in it. And are you happy? I've never been happy before. You know, I'm a, I'm a different man. Have you heard? I married an angel. I'm sure that the change will be awfully good for me. Have you heard? An angel I married to heaven she's carried this fellow with a kiss. She is sweet and gentle. So it isn't strange when I'm sentimental. She loves me like an angel. Now you've heard I'm married an angel. This beautiful change will be awfully good for me. Extra special Warner Brothers Super Duper one? <laughs> mm. Oh. What's wrong? My wings. My wings fell off. What does that mean? It means you can never fly away from me. Well, all right. I'll be an Earth woman. But I must continue to be this much of an angel. I shall always, always tell the truth. The absolute truth. Turn for the second act of I Married an Angel in just a moment. At the beginning of last week, thousands of servicemen and women were back at their posts, camps, and stations after a pleasant Christmas visit with family, relatives, or friends. And thousands of other young men and women were back at school or college. For during the holiday season, America truly went on the move, with more people traveling than at any other time since the end of World War II. At some major junction and transfer points, crowds in stations and on trains even surpassed the crowds of wartime. With the combination of heavy military travel and peak civilian travel, there were inconveniences for some. But in the end, thousands of passengers who otherwise would have found it impossible to reach their destinations 
were able to make their trips by train. For, as you probably well recall, on the eve of the holiday season, winter descended with all its fury in many parts of the country, bringing abnormal, cold, heavy snow, icy highways. Under such conditions, travel by highway became all but impossible. Movement by air was severely curtailed. But because of careful advance planning by the railroads, trains continued to operate, carrying the additional thousands to whom a trip at Christmas meant so much. Extra locomotives and cars were spotted where they would be needed. Additional men were placed at terminals and on trains. Extra sections of regular trains were run, and special trains were operated by the hundreds. Thus, the advance preparations, the ability to meet unusual conditions as they occur, the determination to overcome difficulties resulted once again in getting military personnel and countless other Christmas travelers home and back. For in all kinds of weather, the railroads are prepared to provide the kind of dependable, efficient transportation that is to be found only on trains. <laughs> Now here is Act Two of Rogers and Hart's I Married an Angel, starring Gordon McRae as Willie and Lucille Norman as the Angel. Well, Angel, this is where we live. This is where my heaven sent wife is going to be beautiful and dutiful. Willie. Is this a secret marriage, or are you going to tell everybody? Oh, everybody. No musical comedy dialogue for me, where the guy tells his love to a little star or a red, red rose, or a whippoorwill. Because after all, how many men get to marry an angel? I want to tell everybody, too. <laughs> I'll tell the man in the street and everyone I meet that you and I are sweethearts. I'll shout it out from the roof I'll give the papers proof That we are to complete our I want the world to know I'll lose the radio And when I've said all my say something that's strictly confidential. I'm not sure I know what confidential means, but it sounds exciting. Well, it's not. To tell you the truth, dear, my bank is a bit shaky, and I have got to negotiate a loan from the rich duchess. My sister Peggy is bringing her here now. And as my wife, you, you must help to entertain her. This should be fun. Plotty, but fun. Well, not too much fun now, Angel. Don't do things on a sudden impulse, like, like this morning when you gave your new fur coat to that horse. Well, he looked so cold. Well, maybe that's the way they do things in heaven, but not down here. I won't do a thing. Only talk. Uh, fine. Oh, good morning. Willie, you remember the Duchess. Oh, delighted to see you, Your Grace. Thank you, my dear Count. May I present my new wife? How do you do? Oh, I'm not to do anything. Only talk. <laughs> Isn't she jolly? He calls her angel. That's because I am an angel. Modest, too. <laughs> Willie, don't you think the Duchess looks marvelous, like a young girl? Oh, Peggy, you're too kind. She may be kind, but she's not exactly truthful. You're terribly old, Duchess. Well, <laughs> really? Uh, Duchess, I merely wish to talk to you about a business matter. Uh, run along, Angel. As you know, Duchess, our bank is one of the soundest in all of Europe. Willie! How can you say that out loud? It's not angelic. It's not the truth. You yourself told me your bank was shaky. Shaky? Well, get out of here. You've ruined everything. 
Get out of here. Oh, I've done something wrong. Well, I'll go. I'll go right now. Oh, dear. I need help. Sister Angels, can you hear me? Fly down and help me. Hello. Hello. Lucinda. Clarinda. Philomena. Rosalina. Arabella. Serenella. Where did you come from, sisters dear? Out of the everywhere, into the here. Where are your wings? I've lost those things. How can an angel lose her wings? It just happened. It wasn't planned. But how? Tell us now. It's just one of those earthly things you wouldn't understand. Rabita, what seems to be your trouble? My husband doesn't love me anymore. The heaven, you say. I don't belong here. I'm nothing now. Not an angel, not a woman. Oh, take me back. My dear Brigitte, you must awake and you are sadly mistaken. You've come down to earth and here you must stay. It's too late for us to take you away. I'll make him unhappy. You must take me along. You're not an angel anymore, but one of those strange things. A woman without love or an angel without wings. Peggy. Who? Some relatives of mine. They just went out the window. Went out the window? Oh, sister-in-law, what am I going to do? Well, Angel, I think you need some lessons in how to become a woman, and I'm just the cookie to do the teaching. Peggy, where is she? My angel's left me? Oh, she's only gone out to do a little shopping so she can become alluring and feminine and womanly. Oh, here she comes. Well, what do you know? She got her fur coat back from the horse. Don't forget, Willie, whatever happens, be an angel. Angel. Well, hello, you fascinating man. Angel, oh, what, what happened to you? I've been taking lessons in how to be womanly from your sister. What did she teach you? Plenty. You can do any little thing that you mind to. But you must do it with a twinkle in your eye. You can be unreserved and even unrefined too. But don't forget that little twinkle in your eye. Now, for example, the next time I meet the Duchess, I shall bat my eyelashes and say sweetly, Oh, Duchess, you are the youngest looking woman in all of Europe and parts of Asia Minor. Now you can get away with murder of that kind. But you must do it with a twinkle in your eye. No. No, Angel, I love you just the way you were. Now, don't change. You tell the truth if it kills me. 
but be your own angelic self. Don't be too blamed womanly. Telephone husband. Hello? Oh, yes, Duchess. How are you? You what? You did? You will? Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you, Duchess. We'll sign the papers in the morning, Duchess. Goodbye, Duchess. <laughs> that was a Duchess. Decided to lend my money to the bank. Because for the first time in her life, somebody told her the truth. Oh, come here, you angel. Sisters, what do you want? We want to lose our wings, too. <gasps> Goodness, no, girls. You'd hate it down here on Earth. Why, it's awful, terrible. I can't stand it. <laughs> Come here, woman. Mm, spring is here. That's why my heart goes dancing. Spring is here. I find the waltz entrancing Maybe it's because somebody needs me Now you heard He married an angel This beautiful angel be Thank you very much. Angel will be back in just a moment. I mean Lucille Norman. And meanwhile, our thanks to Betty Lou Gerson, Myra Marsh, Lamont Johnson, and to our entire company. I Married an Angel by Richard Rogers and Lorenz Hart was adapted for The Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. At the urgent request of the government, American industry is busily at work, increasing productive capacity to meet the demands of national defense and civilian commerce. As they're part of this big job, the railroads have been intensively improving and expanding every part of their plant. Essential to this program is the construction of freight cars and locomotives on a scale to match anticipated American transportation needs. And only through the allocation of adequate steel for these purposes can railroad carrying capacity be increased at a time when it is so necessary for the nation's strength and security. Now here again is lovely Lucia Lorman. Thank you, Gordon. I'm glad I lost my wings. I'd much rather take the train, the show train. Oh, any time, Lucy. Just come in and be angelic in front of our microphones. Who are you being a devil with next week, Gordon? Well, Lucy, Mimi Benzel is our guest... And we're going to be singing the great Sigmund Romberg melodies of the Desert Song. Mm, I'll pull up a sand dune and give a listen. <laughs> Good night, Gordon. Good night, Lucy. All aboard. Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. And so until next Monday night and Desert Song, this is Gordon McRae saying goodbye. <laughs> Gordon McRae can be seen in Warner Brothers' Starlift. Our choir is under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music is prepared and conducted by Carmen Dragon. This is Marvin Miller saying goodbye until next week for the American Railroads. Now keep tuned for your Monday night of music on NBC. Transcribe. Hear the voice of Firestone. Now stay tuned for the telephone hour on NBC.